Zotac and Sony announced GeForce RTX 4070 Spider-Man series. Same goes for Palette, they're also showing off their Spider-Man modded GeForce RTX 4070. Thermal Light HR10 Pro SSD cooler is ready for Gen 5 SSDs. MSI Afterburner 4.6.5 stable has been released with the support of GeForce RTX 40 and Radeon RX 7900 series. And lastly, we have AMD Radeon 780M RDNA 3 iGPU gets tested and it's pretty smooth in terms of 1080p gaming. This is Tech Track. So firstly we have Zotac basically announcing their Spider-Man series of well their GeForce RTX cards here and if you look into it well this is the box well yeah it's the Spider-Man multi or what do you whatever the movie was across the multiverse yes Miles Morales and the other characters obviously so yeah basically they just added a backplate for both of these cars so basically if you look into it yeah they're very much identical well not entirely there's a color of differences not only that you can get these merchandise basically there's z tom figure fan emble badges and tote bag or tote bag whatever you call it and of course decals that's also another thing and many other things that you can get main thing would be the magnetic magnetic backplate which is you know visually appealing not only that we have palette global just tweeted this and basically they are also showing off their spider-man miles or only spider-man themed card here basically the similar thing but in this case you have front uh plate basically like not the back plate the front plate i think they also have the back one this is how they're making it that's what they showcase so that's basically the final product that you'll be getting and well to be honest it's cool not gonna lie if you're a spider-man fan it is kind of cool but i don't think they do have any back plate so they're going for the front plate so zotag going for the back plate as you can see right here they're going for the back plate whereas palette going for the front plate so yeah not bad sony is basically sponsoring both of these cars now so yeah interesting next up we have lemon just launched their Thermal Light HR10 2280 Pro SSD radiator here, and this is gonna be supporting the Gen 5 SSD. So imagine an SSD this much hot that you would require a literal heatsink for that. That includes a fan. That's crazy, in my opinion. Like, what world we're living in now? We all also have like coolers for SSDs, Gen 5, uh, to be more exact. But it's crazy, literally. My question is, will this support the other SSDs like Gen 4 SSD? Because if you, if you look into it, the length 2280 is the same for the, all the other variants of SSDs. So it should support other SSDs too, I believe. But yeah, it's, this is just crazy that, that Gen 5 requires a, their own dedicated cooler for like cooling and better performance. It's just mind-boggling. But we also have the pricing for this and if you look into it this is 119 yuan and if you convert it we're getting 17.31 united states dollars basically i mean i believe it's gonna be around 15 dollars you know if you include tax maybe maybe 20 dollars maybe who knows but yeah it's still cheap enough so yeah it's just completely crazy it's just completely crazy the design if you look into it, there are four heat pipes here coming from both sides two from here and two from here and then obviously the heat sink the fins and of course the fan yeah it's just crazy and also one more information is that it has uh, this fan speed we are getting is 3500 to 6000 rpm that's loud as hell like that's that speed will create a lot of sound definitely and if you look into the power consumption we're getting 45 watts well done <laughs> Yeah, it's not only <laughs> gonna suck a lot of power, but also it's loud, and also it cools SSDs. Man, what what were we living in? I wonder. Next up, we have MSI Afterburner 4.6.5 download is now available. This is a stable version of it, not a beta version, so you can download it right now. And also, it has some added support, and the main feature we're looking at is that they have added GeForce RTX 40 series of graphics support, and... They've also added the Radeon RX 7900 series graphics support. So yeah, all these graphics cards are going to be like the newer generation of cards will be supported by the uh, MSI Afterburner now. So good. And lastly, we have ETA Prime just reviewed their very first AMD Ryzen 9 7940HS with the RDNA 3 graphics uh, APU basically if you consider it. 
And well, if you look into it, this is the spec, basically the AMD Ryzen 9 7940HS Zen 4 CPU that this one would come. So I mean, not just the CPU, this is the IG, uh, APU with ha that has the iGPU that is the RDNA, the first R iGPU that is uh, coming from RDNA 3. And if you look into the specs, 8 core, 16 threads, makes sense. Base clock will be 4.0 gigahertz for the uh, processor here. And the max boost clock will be 5.2 gigahertz. And of course, as I said, Radeon 780M iGPU has been supported with coming 12 CUs, clocking at 2800 megahertz. And of course, the, for this particular ASUS model, it will have... 32 gigs of DDR5 memory that's clocking at 5600 megahertz. So off the bat, we're looking into the performance here. Basically, the uh, if you look into it, Geekbench and single core score they're getting 2414 and multi core of 9436. So yeah, not bad score. And in the open seal benchmark, it's getting 30640. And in 3D Mark Fire Strike, we're getting a graphic score of 7,899 and the physics score is 29,712. So in combined, we're getting 2,799, an average of 7,367. So yeah, that's the GPU score we're looking at. So GPU is not that weak either. It's good enough for 1080p gaming. And we'll look into it. Well, we have the Time Spy score and well, it's not that good, honestly. Like only gl like the graphic score, if you look into it, 2,002. 830 and CPU is around 11,000. CPU is quite high for sure, which is 11,453. But the GPU is not that good and kind of makes sense why because it's a time spy score here. And for summary, we have some performance metrics here in this video cards article. We'll look into it. And if you look into CSGO 1080p high, they're getting 130 FPS, not bad, good enough for 1080p gaming and also good for a competitive game though i would you know wouldn't really play csgo in high settings because i would like more fps here right it's a competitive title and gta though however tended to be very high it's getting 81 fps good enough pretty much horizon forza horizon 5 getting tended to be high 86 also good enough fortnite is getting 78 fps on 1080p medium settings doom eternal on 1080p medium, it's getting 83. I would really want more from Doom Eternal here because, you know, Doom Eternal is pretty, like, optimized game. Good good enough. So, 83 FPS, I, I, be, I feel like we need more from that. Yeah. Horizon Zero Dawn 1080p favor performance. Don't know what kind of metrics they're looking at, but 69 FPS. Nice. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 1080p recommended with FSR performance mode. You should look into the performance mode. It's not that, you know, visually attractive, but still... We have the performance metrics of 106 FPS and Cyberpunk, the last one. Tended to be medium settings with some low mixture. We're getting 70 FPS, around 70 FPS. So all in all, you know, iGPU, not bad performance in my opinion. Like, not bad. L really, it's not dedicated GPU. It's literally iGPU. So getting this amount of FPS is pretty good. I mean, for extreme budget gaming or budget laptop gaming, it's not a bad deal, in my opinion, because, like, iGPU, then again, we need to consider that. iGPU at 80 watts, not bad.